Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Examination. We have been through uh, the entire chapter 4 and we have understood uh, all the techniques to be covered as a part of ISTQB Foundation Examination. We'll be looking at uh, more uh, the sample questions, uh, though we have covered a lot of uh, other questions which are from the same uh, scenarios where we talk about like the techniques of the black box, white box and all. So we have been through some of the sample examples and sample questions on those. Uh, moving to some of the theoretical examination questions which can help you and add more weightage to your preparation when you deal with such uh, questions as well, which is more on the theoretical side, does not require any kind of calculation or evaluation. So let's look at some of them here. So the very first question here we have got is like a defect was found during testing while receiving customer data from a server uh, system crashed. The defect was fixed by correcting the code that checked the network availability during the data transfer. The existing test cases covered 100% of all statements of the corresponding module. To verify the fix and to ensure more extensive coverage, uh, some new tests were designed and added to the test suite and executed. What types of testing are described above? So this is basically a type of question which is asked to you from the perspective of understanding of all the techniques where it's not limited to one of them. Just want to make sure that are you able to relate concepts and bring it back together when we talk about a scenario. So sometimes they can ask you a question like this as well where we need to concentrate on uh, the typical uh, topic or content what is given to you in this question for example the very first line here like receiving customer data from the server the system crashed this is all about uh, you know creating a diversion so that you start understanding that the system crashed or the server was involved and we get to the uh, performance uh, testing but remember that non-functional levels are not at all discussed in this uh, curriculum so we are not talking about performance testing at all so this is just a functional issue which was basically to check uh, the network availability during the data transfer so that's a functional testing and the second statement says that the existing test cases covered 100 percent of all the statements that's obviously structural testing so sometimes they cannot be straightforward that we, we are talking about statement testing or decision testing or so uh, they can put it in terms of white box testing or structure testing and like you know what you see in the b where on the third side obviously there was a fix involved so retesting is supposed to be conducted to make sure that the fix was resolved whereas d is performance testing we do not have it so the most relevant option as of now when we see a b c are the one which are discussed except the performance testing so the right answer is c that is a b and c but not d so this is how you basically deal with these kind of questions when it comes to uh, the preparation and also answering the questions in the examination so do try to understand the question before you even look at the options because options might be tricky and it can divert you and obviously pull you to a different conclusion which is not recommended Let's look at the second one here, which of the following statements uh, for the equivalence partition test technique are true. So here they have given you certain statements about uh, the technique on equivalence partitioning. And the statements are, it divides uh, equivalence partition testing, divides possible inputs into classes where all the elements are expected to cause the same behavior. Yes, the very first statement is true. B uses both valid and invalid partitions. Now team here, it might create a diversion in sense of like uh, there must be always a valid and invalid partition in this scenario. No, it's not mandatory. But what they mean to say it uses, that means it makes use of. It is uh, the technique allows you to prepare test cases for valid as well as invalid partitions. Yes, that's true. So here you don't have to get stuck that at any point of time you must have valid as well as invalid in any scenario. No, this technique can be used to derive both the types of test cases. C must include at least two values from every equivalence partition. No, C is not true just because uh, we are saying two values from each partition, but the technique says just one value from each partition. And D can be used only for testing equivalence partition inputs from the graphical user interface, which uh, 
is obviously true of subjected you don't get diverted with the uh, graphical user interface which means the UI that is user interface and it comes back to the black box testing technique if you remember in chapter 2 we have spoken already about the black box testing which means a person who does not have any kind of understanding on the back end and works on the front end of the application by entering inputs into user interface and obviously equivalence partition is a black box test technique so D is absolutely true and coming to the conclusion of this question like A, B, D are true and that's where A becomes the right option for the scenario. Let's look at the next question here. Sometime they can also club the techniques together. Remember I told you about the categorizations of the techniques and this is a question from there. Which of the following option lists techniques categorized as black box testing technique or black box design techniques so here i think that's very really straightforward i just wanted to showcase this question to you that sometime it can be relevant to that as well where we can see that the option a is the right answer uh, equivalence partition decision table testing state transition testing and boundary value analysis where if you see b uh, statement coverage is odd one which is a white box testing technique c decision coverage testing which is a white box d decision coverage testing which is a white box so the only relevant option right here is a which has only the black box testing techniques looking at the next one <clears throat> which of the following statements about the benefits of deriving test cases from use cases are true and which are false so here they basically want you to know that uh, use cases or test basis for which all level and how exactly it can assist you with preparation or deriving the test cases with help of use cases. So let's kick off with the understanding of the statements given to us. A says deriving test cases from use, uh, use cases is helpful for system and acceptance testing. If you remember chapter 2 recalling the information what we collected from the test basis of each level we understand that uh, the test cases uh, can be derived from use cases for three levels that's integration testing system testing and acceptance testing so a is absolutely true because the use cases are one of the test basis for these two levels whereas b says deriving test cases from use cases is useful only for automation testing uh, that has nothing to do with that because automation testing is completely independent of such documentation. Maybe you can prepare test cases and then you decide about automating it and all. But does not have any kind of a direct relationship between the use cases and automation testing. And anyways, we, when you say deriving test cases, what is about test script there? We, for automat automation testing, we make use of test script. C, deriving test cases from use cases is helpful for component. No team, just now I mentioned that it is only helpful in three levels. That is integration, system, and acceptance. And from that, D is also a correct statement. So finally, we have got A and D being the right option. And finally, the A is the option which is having those statements as true. So A and D are true. B and C are false is the right answer. Looking at the next one is which of the option below would be the best basis for testing using fault attacks. So generally when we talk about the experience based techniques you will be always expecting a theoretical question on that where you remember from the error guessing technique that fault attack is an approach which requires a prior understanding of the defects what you're looking for and then you prepare test cases based on that and then you execute them. So obviously we have got uh, a very nice option here to select uh, straightforward but uh, make sure that you read uh, having a good practice of reading all the options before you mark the right one. So A, experience, defect and failure data. Knowledge about the software failures, yes it is one of the best basis for uh, you know executing fault attacks. Whereas B says risk identification performed at the beginning of the project. Now that helps you entirely to do test planning and other things as well. C, use cases derived from business flows by domain expert. Now, as it is an informal technique, use cases invites a formal approach. So we cannot have those as one of the part of it. And very ways, use case testing is one of the black box testing technique and fault attack comes under experience based technique. D, expected results from comparison with an existing system 
Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that really means anything at this point of time when you talk about default uh, attacks. So finally, we have got one option here, that's A, to deal with the right answer, which requires the information like the previous experience, defect data, and failure, failure data. And obviously, knowledge about these common software failures can help you uh, conduct default attacks. Moving to the last one here, we have got you are working on a project that has poor specification and time pressure. Which of the following test technique would be the best test approach to use? So remember, again, from your experience-based testing technique, we have understood that when, when it is having certain criteria, like what is given in the question right now, that it has poor specification and time pressure, we usually cannot go ahead with the formal techniques because it requires a clear specification and detailed documentation of such specification, including enough time to derive the test cases by applying the techniques. But in these cases, we can obviously opt for experience-based techniques, which can help you to execute in the given limited time. So the only option what you see here is C, which is exploratory testing and can help you to conduct such levels. So finally, here is what we wanted to look at, like some of the sample questions uh, from the chapter four from the theoretical aspects, whereas we have respectively looked at different evaluation level questions from each tutorial or each topic or each technique what we have covered so far. So stay tuned for upcoming tutorials on uh, test uh, examination. That's the ISTQB examination, and we will be looking ahead on the Chapter 5 in the upcoming tutorial. Stay tuned. We'll be having much more important things coming in Chapter 5. So thanks for watching as of now. This is all for now. We have more videos coming up on the upcoming tutorials and also on the upcoming chapters of this uh, tutorial. So stay tuned for more videos. Do hit the bell icon for getting notified about the latest videos. And in case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe as early as possible because we'll be having more videos about technologies and testing coming up back after this, right after this. So uh, stay tuned and... Uh, Till then, enjoy learning, happy learning, take care.